So the first thing that we want to talk about today is allowable costs or identifying how you would know whether an expense could be charged to the project or not. So when we're looking at that, there are three main things that we want to consider. Is this expense necessary and reasonable? Does it conform to any limitations or exclusions set forth in the award? And are we treating it consistently among all of our projects? So now we're gonna break each one of those down a little bit more in depth and go into some examples. The first item again is, is this item, is, is this expense rather necessary and reasonable to be charged to the project? So there are a couple questions that we wanna ask ourselves when we're trying to identify that. Is this ex expense necessary to complete the scope of work of the project? Does it really relate to the science? You need to be able to identify exactly what piece of the puzzle that expense um, pertains to, to make sure that it's it's has something to do with the technical aspect of completing the scope of the work of scope of work of the project. Next, you're going to ask yourself to consider reasonableness. Is this something that a prudent person would agree that um, it should be allowable on the project? So you should be able to take a handful of project administrators and give them the, the same information about this expense, perhaps a justification, and they should all agree that um, it, we can move forward with charging that expense to the project. So a couple examples that uh, we've included on here, we have Dr. Smith, and he would like to purchase a freezer for his project. Um, after talking to him a little bit, he's explained that the freezer houses samples that he will analyze as part of the project. So going back to those questions, is this necessary to complete the project or the scope of work? Yes, knowing that we have to have a freezer to be able to keep those samples at the right temperature to be able to analyze them properly, that does pertain to the scope of work and it is necessary to complete the project. Is it reasonable? When you provide that information to multiple PAs, would they say the same thing? Yes, I believe so. Our next example, is Dr. Young. He'd like to charge uh, costs related to an employee morale building uh, painting with a twist session for his team. And he did make sure to note that the individuals that were at the session are actively working on the project. So going back to our questions, is this necessary to complete the project? So even though those individuals are working on the project, a painting with a twist session can't be tied back to any science, any research or the scope of work. So um, when considering that, unfortunately, this type of expense is not going to be something that is considered necessary or reasonable. If that were to come across my desk, for instance, once I identified that it, it was not uh, allowable by those standards, then I would reach out to the, the department or the PI to ask for another source of funds, something that's non-sponsored research to cover um, that expense. The next thing that we consider uh, when checking for allowability is, does this expense conform to any limitations or exclusions listed in the agreement? So terms and conditions of an award can be very specific or they can be very broad. Uh, they can tell you specifically the things that you can charge, things that you cannot charge. And so with that, we have to all the time be making sure that any expense that comes through, it is allowable for that specific award. So some examples here, we have Dr. Strong would like to pay for a piece of equipment on his project. Um, in this case, this is, wasn't something that was in the budget. Maybe something broke and they needed it after, um, you know, further along in the project. So at that point, we would review the agreement and see what it says. This time, it specifically says that equipment is unallowable. So for us, if the agreement states that, it's going to be a hard stop. We're not going to be able to move forward with that expense. And that's not something that we would go further and asking the sponsor either since it specifically uh, kind of lists that, that answer, that no in the agreement already. The next example is Dr. Friedman would like to purchase mangoes as part of his research project. Typically food purchases are deemed unallowable kind of a, across the board. Um, 
in a general sense, it can seem more like you're purchasing meals or um, snacks, something like that. Um, with this particular project, though, after reading the scope of work and reviewing the agreement, uh, we were able to identify that this project, the scope of work of the project, solely revolves around mangoes. So they're purchasing these mangoes, they're providing them to participants, then they consume the mangoes, and then uh, analysis is done after the fact to see how that has affected the participant group. Obviously, because of the way that the, this uh, agreement is written and what is needed, mangoes are going to be considered an allowable expense. Um, in this instance, when you review the agreement, not only do you see that in the scope of work, but it's also listed in the budget justification because it's going to be such a large expense. <laughs>